You're listening to Wickham Sound online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. Welcome along, this is episode 7, although officially I think we stopped counting at 4, of the Wicked Wanderers show. Uh, this is the first um, programme that we've done where two games have happened since the last one. It is. It's very exciting. It's a bit like those jingles, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we will be reviewing uh, the uh, games against Millwall, which does now seem quite a long time ago, um, and Reading. Of course, the Millwall game gave us the first goal Ray. for Wicked Wanderers in, in the Championship, uh, so we shall celebrate that. And of course, we are looking ahead to Saturday's game uh, away at former Premier League boys Norwich talking to talking of looking ahead uh, kicking off this season is the league campaign for Wickham Wanderers ladies we'll catch up with their manager Dave Ward uh, also talking about their fantastic women's FA Cup run uh, which saw them get to the second qualifying round going out to Fulham and we will be chatting to former player Ken Wilson as well uh, Colin was chatting to him uh, I think it was earlier on this week wasn't it it was um, uh, and so looking forward to that yet another former player that we can tick off uh, we've only done seven episodes and I think we've now had six former players on which isn't bad and we've covered different eras as well, we well have. thanks to the ex-player association so we spoke to uh, Len Worley who was around in the 50s he was, yes. Uh, we've spoke. I'm not sure I'm going to do this in order. Uh, we spoke to Glenn Creaser, who was around in the 90s. Doing, doing it in order so far, yep. <laughs> and we spoke to um, John Maskell, who was around, well, from the 60s through to 1980, so that's covered quite an era there. And, uh, yes, we'll be chatting to uh, Ken, who was around in the early 80s. Looking forward to that. That's uh, going to be fantastic. Uh, also hearing from Gareth um, quite a few times. So we're going to hear from Gareth post the Millwall game, post the Reading game, and also uh, today uh, where he was previewing the Norwich City match. Uh, all of which you've been to, of course, then, it, the Millwall, and, yeah, just, yes, just no, to do, I, it feels like more games, Yeah, it? It, again, it does, yes, uh, so I was at Reading um, on a Tuesday night, uh, it, it wasn't too cold, actually, it was quite nice, uh, <laughs> but, but... Reading on an October evening. Uh, indeed, yes, yes, definitely got lots to, to recommend it, um, and I know, uh, I keep sounding like a broken record every time I speak to Gareth, and every time that I sit in this chair... But we played really well again. We really did. We I think honestly, that makes it worse, doesn't it? If, you if, know, you, if, we, if we played badly and then lost, you think, well, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I felt... Th- there have been two times this season where I've come away thinking, well, yeah, OK, fair enough. Uh, one was the Blackburn game where obviously it was 5-0. The other one was the Swansea game mm. where you felt that actually they spent most of that game in second gear. They, they went up into third gear to score their two goals and then very much came back to second gear. And yes, OK, we competed with them quite well in the second half, but you did slightly feel that actually... If we'd started to threaten they probably would have gone up a few more gears but every game since then you know we've played really well and i went along to to reading on tuesday thinking well goodness me you know they're second in the table they were second in the table Mm. then obviously almost an identical record with bristol city apart from a slightly inferior goal difference um and you know and and they hadn't lost all season (laughs) and and you just think well yeah this is going to be a really long night isn't it and it's you know it's gonna it's gonna be hard to find any positives whatsoever and actually you know goodness me the first half six shots to reading's none um and you know and they really did look quite rattled um i do wonder slightly whether or not teams are now looking at the table and underestimating us for the first 45 minutes and possibly the same was true of millwall as well because the very notable thing about both millwall and the reading games was that clearly their managers had a little bit of a word in their ear at half time because they came out in the second half looking a lot more determined a lot more committed and a lot more up for it um but that's not to put anything um you know against Wickham's performance in both games we played really well we competed um, and we were so unlucky uh, against Millwall not you know not to at least get a point and against Reading again you know we we deserved you know last last few minutes Fred had a couple of opportunities uh, you know he drew a fantastic save from the Reading keeper and you came away thinking well yeah we definitely deserved at least a point from that. And it must have been such a great feeling to take the lead on Saturday. Oh, it was brilliant. That, you know, that, that was easily the best moment of the season so far. Um, you know, when you're sitting in the press box, you are meant to slightly have a bit of decorum. Um, but I was sitting there with um, Dan, the guy who does the, the Chairboys Live um, um, broadcast. And, you know, and both of us, yes, so the decorum went straight out the window. We were jumping up and down and yelling. And um, as I mentioned to Gareth, actually, the, the amount of noise, you know, you did slightly feel that there were fans in the stadium because there was a lot of noise 
uh, quite a lot of it being made by by Pete Kuhig, unsurprisingly. And Scott Cashcat wasn't somebody who we picked as the first championship goal scorer. No, he wasn't. I mean, thank goodness that actually it was a Wickham player because we did also previously discuss that you know we really hoped that the first goal would be from a Wickham player because you know it would be slightly awful if it was an own goal if it was off somebody's knee, um, you know, head back backside sort of thing. And you know the Millwall keeper nearly actually sort of gave us a goal like that. He certainly could have done better, uh, but Scott was alive to it and made sure that actually you know it was a Wickham name on the team sheet rather than it went down as an own goal. Yes. Yeah, so the subject of last week's poll uh, was who do you think uh, to be the first goal scorer? The subject of this week's poll, which we'll give you more details on in a moment, uh, is where do you think the first points will come from? But first, let's hear the thoughts of Gareth after the Millwall game on Saturday, speaking to Bob. I keep saying this to you, you must be sick of me saying it, you played so well. Yeah, we did, we did. Uh, again, it's an improvement, um, and I, I think as long as people keep saying an improvement and an improvement and an improvement, you know, Swansea and Blackburn are distant memories now. If we'd have played like that against them, I'm sure we'd have got more out of those games as well. But it was, uh, it was a tough, tough game against a tough Millwall side. Um, Gary Routes a good friend and a great manager, and I'm sure that they're going to be uh, a decent side, taking a lot of points off people this season. So, really proud of the boys and, uh, and some good positive moments first goal. I can find we're back and it's Mamete young young boy making his debut which is you know all all positives for Wickham Wanderers and uh, really pleased and uh, and hoping that we can get our first win very soon and Anis being the first Wickham player to be born after the year 2000 which makes me feel old I'm sure it makes you feel old as well very old um, but I mean he's a cracking kid he's uh, he's been really impressive in training uh, and, and it's what we have to do here you know um, really pleased with Josh as well he came in and had a great debut but um, unfortunately you know we, uh, we just came up short to and, and a basic mistake is cost us and, and also you know the, the goal could have could have been given it wasn't you, uh, you take that you have to take it on the chin sometimes when Scott Cash gets schooled it did sound like a bit of a small explosion went off in here I couldn't help thinking though that if the fans had been here it would have been absolutely phenomenal yeah you know what we miss them we miss them big time and all um, my biggest thing this season is this, these, all these people have supported this club for so long and missing out on this fantastic season that we, uh, we're in the championship um, hopefully they'll be let in soon but I'm sure that the first win and a big cheer around the houses of Wickham will be coming up soon Fantastic positivity from Gareth despite yet another uh, defeat and of course also fantastic for uh, a member of the B team to come on and do so well. Oh yes, Anis Mametti. He, he was he, he's fantastic. I mean I I more noticed him to be honest on Tuesday night uh where he did just come on and instantly cause Reading a lot of problems. Um you know, uh, amazing that he is now the first Wiccan player to be born after the year 2000, which you just think, "Oh goodness me, I'm sure that makes a lot of us feel really really old." Um and yeah, he he was signed obviously as a, a B team sort of prospect player but I don't think he's possibly going to be troubling the B team for very long fantastic what, what sort of impressed you most about him just his his speed and, and just his uh, agility and just his he, he just he was one of those people um, who just you know he really really looks up for it and he looks like he's having a good time when he's on the pitch you know he, he's he, he looks a bit like he's still playing kids football and uh, you know and, and those moments where actually well yes you know uh, okay you you know you can start on on the subs bench and you know and the kid looks a bit sad and like, oh no and as soon as you say right okay come Come on, you're coming on, and he, you're like you so know, you're ready energy. to go. Exactly, you've got so much energy. He looks like a player who's got a lot of energy, um, and yeah, I think he's going to be great. Talk us through the poll for this week, then. Um, so the poll for this week is yes. Where do you think the first points for Wickham will come from? Do you think they will come from the Norwich game, from the Watford game, from the Sheffield Wednesday game? <laughs> Or are you going for after the, the later? Uh, yes, exactly. The the tenth game or beyond that. Um, you know, it's a difficult run, isn't it? Mm. When you say those names, Norwich, Watford, obviously both Premier League clubs last season. Sheffield Wednesday, the only club with fewer points. The only club with fewer points than us. But you know, I think we all hoped that maybe they'd be slightly stuck on on minus twelve mm. or maybe minus ten for a good few games. That clearly hasn't happened, and they are whittling down uh, the points. Um, you know, I I really hope they're still behind us by the time that we play them because mm. that might be slightly depressing that'll be a six pointer no maybe yeah, more probably, yes, well yeah when you start on minus 12 you're not quite sure are you um but yes that is our poll for this evening where do you think the first points are going to come from will it be the norwich game the watford game the sheffield wednesday game um or later than that you can find the poll um as always on twitter you can search for the hashtag twws
Sounds like algebra, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't ask me about algebra, please. <laughs> no, that's another programme entirely. Still to come, we're here from uh, AC Stranger Ken Wilson. We'll also be catching up uh, with Dave Ward, the uh, Wickham Wanderers ladies' manager. But first, uh, the thoughts of Gareth once again with Bob after the uh, game at the Medeski on Tuesday night. You went against a team that is now top of the championship. Half time, you had six shots to their none, which I think says it all. Do you know, it's again one of the better performances of the season I think the last two games have been really good uh, we keep that up we'll be fine I'm so convinced we're going to stay in this championship with performances like that but um, need the results key moments are really important and when you've got a strike you've paid millions of pounds for he comes up with a key moment you know we, we can't do that we haven't been able to do that but I'm sure that we, uh, we've we got enough in this dressing room to, to start winning games in the championship six on a run now for me defeats that's never happened before um, but you know, I don't care. We've never been in the championship before. We've uh, we've got to make sure that we are, you know, really positive for Saturday going into uh, that game, taking some of the stuff we've had tonight, um, but just making those key moments, you know, count. Um, you know, they've had they've had a, a hoof up front, chested down, and he's turned us and, and scored a goal, and, and it's not good enough. You know, we don't get to do that. We've had to work really hard for our chances, and when we've had them, we've got to stick them in the goal as well. We've got to hit the target, work the keeper. Um, yeah, it was it was a, a great performance, but again, it's a defeat, and I'm not stupid. There, we need to start winning games. And Fred nearly did the same thing right at the end as well. St- st- nearly stuck it in the goal. Yeah, I mean the keeper's made a fantastic save, and I think Fred will be disappointed with the one earlier, a couple of minutes earlier, where he's, he's gone over the bar. I think that was a, a great chance to get an equaliser, um, and who knows then? But no, pleased. I've got a few injuries still. They're coming back. Um, Boys are good. Boys are okay. You know, it's just now that we've got to make sure we are competitive in every single game the way we can be because uh, I'm not scared of this championship at all. I'm really, really looking forward to this. And uh, it's great when all these national papers keep telling uh, telling everyone that Wickham haven't won a game yet. They're still talking about us. If they're not, if they're not bothered about us, stop, stop writing about us. Uh, it's great. There's only one thing worse than being talked about. That's not being talked about. So I'll take that all day. Anis Mometi looks like he could be a lot of fun. Anis Mometi is going to be one heck of a player. Um, I think he could play a really high level. Um, I'm really pleased with him. I'm going to have to rein him in on that 40-yard shot that he tried. Um, but um, his, his confidence is brilliant. I think you see his passing ability, the way he can multi down the wing. Um, he's going to be a big player for us, and, uh, and I'm sure that um, you know we, uh, we'll be seeing plenty more of Anis. I think you can tell how well we played the fact that actually Gareth sounded quite depressed in that interview mm. you know he really knew how close we'd come to getting a point out against the side that were now top of the championship um, and yeah I, you know I actually I thought that was a good thing that actually you know he was disappointed he said how disappointed the boys were in the dressing room and that just goes to show well you know they did play really really well and just quickly something which keeps coming out as well and you'd know more from being at the games as well uh, certain refereeing decisions seem to be going against yeah as well. definitely you know it, it really is that thing that when you're playing in a league like this when you're the new boys you're very much seen as the new boys and you know almost as if you can't be trusted and of course all of the 50-50 decisions will go to the teams that actually you know were in the championship have been in the championship previously and that is you know yeah slightly sticks in the in you know just it's just annoying just shouldn't be Anyway, uh, let's continue now. Uh, let's uh, talk about Wickham Wanderers uh, ladies because uh, their league season starts uh, this coming Saturday. The reason for that, actually, uh, it, it's nothing to do with COVID. It's nothing to do with the weather. It's the fact that they've done so well um, in uh, the FA Cup. Of course, uh, this week, um, in fact, just 24 hours ago, we had the news that Tara Woodward, uh, Wickham Wanderers ladies striker and one of the leading goal scorers over the past couple of seasons, has announced that she is stepping away from football for a while. Uh, so I started off by asking Dave uh, about Tara. It was a personal choice for Tara for uh, a series of personal reasons as I understand it. It was a bit of a surprise um, but you know um, she's had to make those choices for herself uh, which she's done uh, and she goes with our blessing and our support um, and I wish her every success uh, with whatever she chooses to do in the future um, but now's the time for me to focus on the other players in the squad um, because now they're the ones that are left uh, having to fight for um, the, the club. Wickham Wanderers fans actually are quite aware of who Tara is. She's got quite a strong social media presence. Uh, um, does, yeah. you know, we're, we're all aware um, of, of various situations that she's had previously. Um, and as you say, I think you know we're, we all wish her absolutely 100% the best and, you know, and hope that one day we're going to see her back in the, the light and dark blue quarters. 
Well, you never know. You never know. Um, you can never say never to these things, can you? Um, so, but but yes, I think for the time being, you know, I think uh, Tara wants to uh, take a break, and she needs to uh, sort of recharge her batteries and her enthusiasm, uh, and also to deal with what, whatever else is going on in, in her life. Um, you know, uh, and those decisions I know are quite personal to her. Um, uh, and that should be respected. The season starts on Sunday, um, but the reason that the season is, is sort of being delayed is actually because of how well you've done it in the FA Cup. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, it's been really quite a strange season, what with uh, pre-season suddenly merging with uh, competitive uh, fixtures in the FA Cup. Um, so the FA Cup has almost proved to be a uh, um, pre-season programme as well. Um, but it's, it's, it's been quite an eventful journey. Um, it's one that we've all enjoyed uh, immensely. Um, it's a shame that it came to an end on Sunday against Fulham. Um, because we we fallen one stage earlier than we did last season, which was the furthest we'd ever got in the competition. Um, but you know, on reflection, uh, we didn't take our chances on Sunday, um, and we had probably four or five good chances in the first half to put the game to bed um, and fluffed our lines on those, and then we conceded a fairly poor free kick, in my opinion. Um, wide on the left, uh, just over after the hour. Um, really well struck free kick, really good near post run and finish from uh, one of their strikers, uh, which made it quite difficult for us. But um, the the players really, really did please me on Sunday because it was probably the most together that we've looked as a side with all of the new signings that we've made. Um, and we went on, we hit the woodwork twice with their goalkeeper beaten hands down on both occasions. Um, so again, you know, it, it's, it, I can't remember how many times we've hit the post this season, but it's it's numerous occasions every, every fixture so far we've clattered the woodwork um, none more so than when we played Eversley in California a couple of rounds early when we hit it eight times in the game which uh, is almost unprecedented I've never seen it before in all my many years of being involved in football and it must be so frustrating as well. I mean, I, I've spoken to Gareth Ainsworth a lot this season as well, um, particularly with regards, say, to the Fulham game, where, yes, OK, so you've had a good couple of chances, you know, unfortunately they haven't gone in, and then your opposition has one chance and they take it, um, and, you know, that, and that's the difference between, a, you know, a draw and a, a loss. It, it was. It was fine margins on Sunday, um, and, and to be fair to Fulham, they were very well organised throughout the 90 minutes. Um they defended pretty well. Um, when we did breach them, uh, we had to get past um, a very good goalkeeper in Edie Kelly, who um, is a former AFC Wimbledon player. Um, and, you know, they, they were a good side, don't get me wrong. Um, but I thought that we had the edge in the first half. They probably edged it in the second half. And then last 15 minutes or so, um, we, we went all guns blazing. And as I say, we hit the woodwork twice. Um, and uh, fortune favoured the brave on that, on that occasion. Uh, but I take a lot of pride from that particular performance because, um, as I say, the whole squad that were involved, I mean, I, I think we made four changes in the game uh, to try and get something back out of it, especially after we'd gone one nil down. Um, and the response from the, the whole group was immense. Um, so it gives me a lot of uh, encouragement moving into league fixtures uh, coming this week. Yeah, I mean, particularly what you're saying about the last 15 minutes, it sounds like it was the classic cup tie where you were then throwing everything at it to try and, you know, to try and get that goal back. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we we, we did that, and, you know, and and young Amy Whale, um, who's our under eighteen goalkeeper as well, um, she's been playing. She's played all the FA Cup games so far, um, at, apart from the Eversley game. Um, but uh, she's done exceptionally well. She had a couple of routine saves to make. Uh, nothing she could have done about the goal because it was just so quick fire. Um, that you know, a, a more experienced keeper would not have reacted any more quickly than Amy did, um, and you know she's been really, really good for us so far, and uh, that will continue this weekend as well. So it must be a little bit strange the fact that we're you know we're a week away now from November, and, and the league season is only just about to start. Yeah, I know it, it. It does feel really odd saying we're going to play play our first game on the first or second of November, whatever it is. Um, it, it's mad. 
Um, well, in fact, sorry, it's still the end of October. I'm yeah. getting ahead of myself. Um, but yeah, it, it it does seem very strange playing so late in the, in in, the, in this autumn. Uh, but yeah, we've got a very um, difficult game uh, ahead of us uh, in playing Woodley away. Um, they had a very good win on Sunday, where they came back from two one down at half time against Newbury and managed to win six two. So I think they're going to be very testing opposition for us. Um, and this season, looking at some of the results so far, I don't think anyone can take anything for granted in the game or in this particular league. I mean, again, as you say, one of the slightly curious things as well is the fact that actually other teams have been playing whilst you haven't. So, so you know, you're you're currently um, there in the table, you know, zero games, zero points. But actually, there are other teams that, that have already played two or in, I think, in a couple of cases, even three games. Yeah. Um, and, and we're not bottom of the table either. <laughs> Which is it's always good. Again, a, bit, a little bit like the men, but this time for different reasons. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. I mean, it's very important for us to get off to a good start on Sunday. Um, and uh, I've, I've got every, every confidence in our players that uh, they'll be able to deliver uh, on the day. Um, but it will not be an easy game. For, uh, uh, you know, there's nothing you can take for granted in this league. Um, everyone's uh, capable of beating each other. But, you know, we've got a group of four or five of us, I think, who are considered the favourites for potentially promotion this season. I regard us as one of those. Um, uh, but it's important for us to get off to that quick start because dropping too many points um, when competing for a solitary promotion spot is uh, is not ideal. So it's really a case of we must win games. Uh, drawing games is not really helpful and losing certainly isn't. So, you know, we've got to go all guns blazing on Sunday and uh, hope to come away with a positive result. And yeah, I would imagine that that's true. Playing in a league where actually there aren't, you know, there aren't as many teams. You know, Gareth Ainsworth will, will okay, he's got 24 or 23 opponents to play, whereas you yeah. haven't got anything like that. So actually, as you say, drawing games quite often isn't helpful. You are really looking for the three points every time. Pretty much. And uh, and history shows that in in the league, those teams that have gone on to win uh, the, the championship and then get promoted to the National League level have usually dropped maybe two, three points across the season. Some have gone completely unbeaten and won every game uh, or maybe just got the odd, odd point, uh, odd two points in a draw. Um, but, you know, the championship side usually goes through pretty much close to unbeaten all season. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's that's why it's so important to get off to that positive start. And, you know, one could argue that on paper, we're looking at Woodley and Newbury as the two opening games. Um, but they've always proved tough opponents, um, especially in their own backyards as well, uh, where they can make life very difficult for for sides that like to play. Um, They too have players in their side that can hurt us. Um, Their striker, Rosie Page-Smith, is well known in the game um, at this level, and she always scores goals. So, you know, we've got to be concentrating for the, for the whole 90 we've got to make sure we defend well uh, but we've also got to make sure that we're far more ruthless in the top third which is probably the, the one thing that um, uh, has cost us in terms of having more comfortable victories in the FA Cup so far it's interesting that you talk about um, teams being difficult to play in their own backyard. Obviously, there's been quite a debate um, since um, league games have been played behind closed doors about whether or not home advantage does count for very much, particularly when fans are there. I know that at the level that Wickham Wanderers ladies play, um, you know, having a crowd there is, is not something that happens particularly often. So how do you find home advantage um, in, in a division such as Wickham Wanderers ladies are in? Well, the home advantage for us is the fact that we play on a 3G surface, uh, which we're very familiar with. It's a true surface. Um, and uh, again, some opponents find it a bit more difficult, but I think less so nowadays because uh, virtually every side in the division, as far as I'm aware, trains on a 3G surface uh, throughout the winter. Um, but it's when you go onto grass pitches after having had the luxury of 3G where the bounce is true, the bounce is consistent, uh, you get onto a heavy, muddy pitch and it's a very different ball game for our players. Um, and, you know, fortunately we've had a, a bit of practice having played on grass for the last two weeks 
um, and you know the players are now used to that surface so playing Woodley away actually is um, not something that should worry us in terms of the surface but uh, you know I don't want players looking at excuses I think they should get to play on any surface um, and I'm confident that the quality we have in the side can do that um, but, you know there's no doubt about it I've got a very strong squad this season um, it's a very competitive squad um, and it's one that I hope will do well what are you looking at in terms of the season then? So, so promotion definitely is is a possibility. It's it, it's the absolute target for us. Yeah, um, you know, it, it, if we don't aim for that, then we might as well not bother competing. Um, but I think that the additions that we've brought into the side, along with the players that we've retained, we have a very strong group this year, uh, and. You know, on their day, they should be able to compete with the likes of Moneyfields, Bournemouth, Abingdon, um, and give them a very good run for their money. And I think the players that were with us last season uh, and with the new additions, uh, there should be enough know-how there to to see us get our noses in front and then see games out uh, and to manage games effectively. For those who aren't aware, tell us whereabouts you sit within the the football pyramid of women's football. So obviously people are very familiar with the Super League, but whereabouts do Wickham fit into that 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 um, sort of puzzle, as it were? Yeah, we're, we're four tiers below that, um, and uh, we, we operate at the regional league level. Um, and then below that, you've got uh, regional divisions one um, in, in in many of the regions, and then you go down to county leagues where they can have as many as four or five divisions in some areas um, but you know the aim for us is to get into the national league set up where you've got three match officials every week it's run and managed by the football association it's recognized as being a, a significant step up in standard um, and again the commitment is much higher because the traveling is much further um, if you not that I like to draw comparisons between female and male football but in the men's game there are so many leagues and so many non-league sides um, that sometimes the travelling isn't too onerous but having said that I've looked at some of the structures this year and some of the travelling is, is enormous Yes, yeah. Um, but in female football there are less clubs um, so consequently regions are bigger um, the national league setup is bigger um, and, and the geographic spread wider also, I would imagine that one of the differences between the two is that actually, um, it, it, is it more difficult for you to find players? How do you how do you source new players at Wickham Wanderers, ladies? Um, it, it, it's a bit like having the black book, proverbially. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's knowing players, keeping tabs on players that you've seen play, um, talking to other players and using their net networks, talking to other managers and other leagues. Um, you know, uh, it, it should be no shock to anyone that with Tara's announcement, um, I've been very quick to uh, make contact with another striker with National League level uh, um, experience and ability, um, who I think will be training with us from next week. Um, you know, and if I can get her across the line, that gives us more strength and gives us a, a more than adequate replacement for uh, Tara leaving. So, um, you know, it, it, it is about people that you know and the contacts that you, you retain over the years. With regards to um, the, the club at Adams Park, how much link do you have actually with the, the men's side? Um, pretty strong, really. Um, you know, we, we've done all of our kit ordering and... Um, all of our training kit ordering through the club this year. Um, uh, when we did our registration evening at, at Adams Park, although it was all socially distanced, um, quite rightly so, um, Pete Kuig came in and um, spoke to the ladies. Um, and uh, we also introduced him to the under-18 squad as well. And he said um, some motivational and encouraging words of support there. Um, We've also got links with the Trust Board, of course, um, through David Robertson principally, um, who has a responsibility for female football um, and, and that link. Um, so, yeah, we very much feel part of the, the Wickham family. Uh, and I, I would say relationships are very, very positive. Um, during pre-season, uh, we have the added benefit of being able to use uh, the training ground uh, shared with the men. Um, and you know Gareth has been very um, welcoming in that respect right throughout the summer 
so yeah it, it's, it's a really good positive relationship fantastic with regards then to covid at the moment what are the rules with uh for for wick and wanderers fans who want to come and see you is it is it currently being played behind closed doors at, at the moment it's being behind closed doors um for home games but for for spectators that are really determined to support us and come and watch the game um you can view through the cage at this at, at the moment um we have applied for a grant for, to the football foundation uh, which we've been awarded, I'm told, which is to help um, make ground spectators or COVID safe for spectators. So we're now going to be entering the dialogue with the college at, uh, at uh, Flackwell Heath um, to see if we can put in some additional features that will enable um, some supporters to come back and watch the game from within the cage. Uh, so they're a bit closer to the action. They're not having to look through um, a, a fence at the game. Um, and obviously that generates a bit more atmosphere as well. Uh, but we have to do it the right way and make sure that we um, ensure the safety of all concerned. Um, and, you know, working with the college, we should be able to, to do that fantastic well it's good good to know that that you know that that's a possibility um and so that actually yes fans might be able to come as you say and not not have to be doing the looking through the case thing in the future yeah absolutely uh, I, you know and I, I i'm so grateful for the support that we've had um for our home fixtures so far um and uh, long may that continue but it'd be really nice to get those people back inside the cage so they can get closer to the game Fantastic. Well, Dave, all the very best against Woodley United and for the whole season. And obviously, do come back on regularly and tell us how you're getting on on, on the Wick and Wanderer show. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm just hoping we can bring the points back on Sunday evening for everyone. Um, but uh, yeah, and I'd love to join you again. Absolutely, you know we, we we need some points here at Wickham Wanderers. Clearly, you know the, the the men aren't delivering at the minute. Let's keep our fingers crossed for the Norwich game and for the Woodley game as well. Uh, and how fantastic it will be on Sunday evening to be sitting there with, with six points between the two of you. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure that Gareth and his squad have got more than enough capacity and capability to start getting points on the board. Um, you know, it, it it's obviously been a bit of a shock to start with, but you know the game on. Um, Wednesday at Reading, uh, my understanding is again that uh, the lads did really, really well and uh, were undone uh, by one ball. Yeah, I, I, I mean, again, I, you know, it sounded exactly like you were saying about the Fulham game. So I was lucky enough to be there at, at the Reading game and, and almost exactly the same. You know, Wickham did have, have chances. Um, yeah. You know, really, Reading had one and, and they scored it. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, for, from that, I, I think Gareth and, and, and his team can draw an awful lot of strength moving forward because they would have seen an awful lot of positives from that game. Um, and they'll hopefully be wanting to build on those positives. Um reduce any lapses in concentration which I think all players are guilty of irrespective of what level they play at um, and uh, they'll they'll get on top of it I'm sure um, they certainly deserve to be there um, no argument and I'm sure that they'll get themselves out of those relegation spots over the next few weeks Dave Ward the manager of Wickham Wanderers ladies although if you've just tuned in and heard him say it'd be really nice if you can get people back into the cage <laughs> we're not talking about like what is it UFC or something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> into the octagon yeah, indeed yes no it was it w- was nothing to do with that and we wish them all the best for uh, their opening league fixture away to woodley ah uh, woodley united on, who of course are the Sunday. team that gareth ainsworth plays for occasionally at the non-league side uh, that he uh, sometimes turns out for uh, on a tuesday or wednesday night although i don't imagine that he'll be doing that that much this season given how many midweek games we have got indeed um, latest on the poll. Yes. Um, so poll we are update. asking you tonight uh, who you think uh, will will, will uh, give Wickham Wanderers their first points. Uh, will it be Norwich, Watford, Sheffield Wednesday, or will it come later than that? Uh, currently, Norwich and later than that um, are, are currently tied for the lead. Oh. Uh, so uh, come on, everyone. Let's be optimistic rather than pessimistic. If you want to take part in the poll, uh, then go on Twitter and search for hashtag TWWS. Still to come on this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers show, we'll hear from Gareth once again. Uh, this time looking ahead to the trip to Norwich, which could be where the first points come from. That'd be incredible, wouldn't it? Former Premier League team. Good? Former Premier League team getting uh, getting points against them. That'd be excellent. And we'll be chatting to 80s striking sensation Ken Wilson uh, in a few moments' time. This is Wickham Sound. Optimism is the key. That's our feature, I think, isn't it? Throughout the whole the whole of this series. Uh-huh. And, and that's how Gareth would be as well. Um, and when you hear him talking about the Norwich game, you know, it's completely different from how he was post the Reading game. 
And it's, it's, it's so infectious, isn't it? Because you feel, oh yes, the, the, the points are just around the corner. Yeah, absolutely. Apart from everyone who's really voted for yes. the 10th place. Well, sorry, it? that's not me. I have voted for Norwich. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So we'll be looking ahead to the game against Norwich. Are you going to Norwich? I am going to Norwich, yes. There's an expression you don't hear very often. <laughs> Ooh, are. No, do, no, do you know sorry, the way? That's very stereotyped. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. Do you know the way? Um, uh, just about, yes. It's a long way, isn't it? It is a long way. And also, it, you know, it's a real pain because um, the, the, there aren't really motorways uh, in, no. in that bit of the, the world. So you have to... It, uh, uh, this is going to sound awful. You have to concentrate a bit more, if you know what I mean. Watch out it, if you're on the roads and you see... <laughs> I mean, because there's roundabouts and stuff. Whereas, roundabouts, you know, good lord. Whereas you know, when you're going to Blackburn, it's fine because you just get on the M40 and basically it's motorways all the way, so you can just sit there and you know, and you don't really have to think too much. Whereas going to Norwich, too many roundabouts. If Bob's not on the show next week, you might. <laughs> Well, well, Didn't I, concentrate nearly enough. <laughs> I think because I will have had an accident or, or I will have been arrested for dangerous driving. <laughs> That's <laughs> not going to happen. Don't do as he says. Do, do, do as you do. Uh, let's move on, shall we? <laughs> uh, so, yes, uh, we mentioned um, a little earlier on that uh, thanks to the ex Player Association who we heard from JDT last week on the programme and the great work they do, including um, supplying the, the nets which is a, is a fantastic thing, and the goal for the uh, for the shooting practice. Yeah, I thought that was really good. Luckily, it wasn't the nets at Adams Park on Saturday after Ryan all sort of broke one of them. Exactly, yeah. That, <laughs> that, was, that was quite exciting. Hope someone's that kept the receipts on those. Something that you don't see every day. No, it delayed the game somewhat. It well. did, rather. And the great thing was that you got the impression that the guys who were trying to mend it were getting slightly more panicked the longer that they couldn't do it, which made the situation even worse. <laughs> Eventually, they did manage to do it, but you can just imagine that you know, oh, you know, try this, try. It. Oh no, no, that's not working. Everyone's looking at us. Come on! <laughs> it's like, like a panicked pit stop. Yes, it was a little bit Chuckle Brothers, but not quite, not yeah. quite that. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, earlier on in the week, I caught up with with Ken Wilson, who uh, you may remember uh, was a striker at Lokes Park in the eighties, and. Um, he, he was talking about a whole range of things, obviously, uh, what he's done uh, post the club, but we started by chatting about how he started. It was back in early 1980. I was playing for Hounslow Town then um, and not really doing that well, I think, um, uh, in terms of a football career, really. I'd, uh, I'd been at QPR as a youngster and uh, had a few games with Brentford midweek team, but then started getting uh, interested again at Hounslow Town and um, it was actually Brian Lee who saw me play against um, Basingstoke and recommended me to Mike Keane and I was joined within a week or two and, and it was fantastic, the best thing I've ever done. So it must have been quite an interesting period to be at the club. Yeah, I think they were just not they were winning leagues for fun in the 70s, I think, and uh, this was a, a transition. It was at the Ishmian Premier. Mike was, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Mike. He was a, a great manager and a really nice man. And I guess as well, it, it was in a team where, where you had some sort of great players around you and being sort of the, the sort of attacking winger type player that you were, uh, that must have been exciting for the fans to watch as well. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was tough at first. When I first arrived, there was a guy called Mick Hollyfield who was playing in my position. And I thought, how the heck am I going to get into this team? Because he was a fantastic player, a real nice guy. And he re- retired at the end of the first season, so that was my big, big break. <laughs> so, and I got into a very attacking team. Howard Kennedy was the captain and excellent forwards, uh, Steve Long, Terry Glynn real characters like George Borg and it was a, a real step up to me and I really had to respond and I, I just loved playing football and the following season 81-82 was a, a fantastic season for us we didn't win anything but we were actually in all four competitions and went out them all in a period of 10 days in, in April but that was a, a heck of a team we made up for it the following year and won the league but uh, I always rem- had memories of 81-82 we actually played 69 first team games in that season and we were just all in when it came to April and at the, uh, the sharp end so that was a big disappointment particularly losing to Altrincham in the, the semi-final I was going to say it sounds such an, an exciting period are there any particular matches which stand out especially? Yeah it was the Altrincham semi-final where I mean for me personally I'd scored in the 89th minute in the first leg of the semi-final and then they scored in about the 93rd and um that we just didn't really perform at home in front of a really big crowd at, at Wickham. And that was a massive disappointment. Some good cup games, I remember the following season, we played Bristol Rovers, who were then top of the old third division. I always remember Mike Keane went to watch them 
beforehand and he came back and said we've got no chance they'd just beaten Portsmouth 5-0 the previous week to go top of the league um, they're a very very good team and we played ever so well at Bristol we lost 1-0 but it was a heck of an achievement yeah lots of you know, I always loved the home games as well the playing in front of a, a, a good sized crowd which uh, I really hadn't been previous to Wickham and um, great home support and I think that helped us to, to recover and then go on and win the league in 83 that was that was great fun we also had some some great tours I remember an Anglo-Italian tour in 83 we went out to Cosenza it was uh, Chelmsford and us from the UK England sorry and um, uh, uh, Cosenza and Padua and fantastic tournament there was a a rock concert afterwards uh, and so it was a huge crowd in Cosenza we got beaten by them and then won the third and fourth fourth place but uh, fantastic times so lots of good memories you say about the ground as well it must be quite special to, to be one of those people who did play at Lokes Park as well yeah it was uh, and as a wide player you kind of got used to it I was uh, I was always right or or left wing um, and I ended up playing the, the first half on the right wing and the second half on the left wing just to use the slope that was uh, always <laughs> always what I, where I liked to play but it was the, it was an excellent service they're all great surfaces these days but uh, um, I think teams used to raise their game at Wickham because it was a, a wonderful ground and, and pitch of course the the new project is, is fantastic and it's gone up a level now, but uh, got real good memories for Lokes Park, really happy times there. And you must be especially well, sort of reflecting on, on the sort of the gulf, if you like, between you know, Wickham being a non-league team in your day and now, now being in the, in the second tier of English football. Oh, I think we all had to pinch ourselves with, um, when we were going up to the Championship. I think Gareth and Dobbo are just doing miracles here. I know it's a, a difficult start for them, but I was looking at the league table actually and... Uh, thinking actually they're still only four points away from safety now if you'd looked at it like that <laughs> but uh, they've, they've done absolute miracles um, and it's it, it, it makes you feel so proud to be part of that and I just hope they can uh, scramble enough points to to stay up and of course with the current situation I guess the club's not getting all the benefits that it would have done um, because I, I hear that the uh, um, all the boxes and the, and the season tickets were going like hotcakes which is a shame, but I think a lot of clubs in that position. No, definitely. Um, what's your main kind of reflection, if you like, when you, you look back at your time playing for the club? Obviously, it sounds like it's, it's something that you, you definitely really enjoyed. Oh, yes, and I mean, that's where the, the ex-players to go back uh, together. Yes, that was, well, it was a step up for me. It was all of a sudden, it was a, a, a real proper football club and a lot of history. Mike Keane was a, a wonderful coach and manager. He helped so much and had that, had that tradition and you, you felt that you had to, to raise everything, raise your standards and everything. So I, very fondly, I left in 85. There was a, a number of reasons that I didn't think with the business that I was involved in and the traveling I was doing there, I couldn't do the conference. And Howard Kennedy was a very close friend of mine. He was manager at Slough, so I, I went there. It was, uh, I, I, do, I do often wonder, I wish I'd stayed on because I thought I was playing the best football of my, my career at that stage. And um, so I do wonder if, I, if I'd have been better off staying, but um, still got great memories. And fans may not be aware of, of what you did post Wickham. I mean, you were heavily involved in coaching as well. Well, yeah, there was actually some other ex Wickham players, Mark Hill, Steve Thompson. We used to be part of a Curva coaching program, which is still going, and um, we'd, we'd go out most summers uh, to, it was usually New York State, and we'd do a lot of coaching with this co coaching program. Um, we got a lot f from it, and then we subsequently did some more coaching when we got back. Mark Hill and I have remained good friends. And we did, uh, actually, we, we did some of the coach, Curva coaching program at Reading for a while, and that was with Brendan Rogers, and he's gone on to, to great things, but he liked the program. It was aimed at sort of the under-15s and below sort of age groups. Um, but, yes, we've always enjoyed that. I'm, I've done some scouting as well. I still do a bit of coaching, but uh, I've, I'm, a, I'm with the Scottish Football Association, and I'm, my title is an elite performance scout for the, uh, the South East so I get sent to generally see under 18, under 23 games and looking for eligible players and report back to, to Scotland so that's, uh, yeah, I'm still involved albeit part time in football That must be really rewarding actually to, just to, to spot young talent like that Yeah it's interesting, makes you think um, I'm sure um, Gareth and Dobbo have been doing a lot of uh, thinking and looking at players and needing a good, 
scouting regime, which I think they've they've had. They've always done well with that. But um, yeah, it's always everybody's got an opinion. It's it's picking that. I'm, I'm seeing what they class as the elite players. I'm going to these fantastic training centres, the Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea. They're incredible, and looking at lots of talented 16, 18, 21 year olds, um, and thinking, you know, you can't put a cigarette paper between them. They're technically, it's all something else. You're looking for that uh, something else that makes them into a, a top player. That's very good news, actually, for, for people who are Scottish and, and wondering, wondering about the, t- the talent coming through. Yeah, well, yeah, we're looking for anyone eligible. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah, anyone's got a Scottish grandfather, then they're in. <laughs> no, it's, uh, no, it's Scotland have, have turned for the better with Steve Clark at the moment. They, uh, they've, they've they're, they're in much better shape, so that's good. I mean, I, I get a lot of enjoyment for that, but again, with the current situation, it's it's hard to go and see games because of the restrictions, which is rightly so. Of course, and supporters may recognise uh, your name from uh, your sort of collaboration with, with Andrew Harmon, and that must have been a very, a very interesting period as well for you. Yes, Andrew, uh, the, a teammate, a good friend of mine, uh, very successful, and uh, as a big love for Wickham Wanderers and was uh, genuinely interested in in putting forward uh, his proposals um, and uh, yeah I was uh, I, I supported him on that and we had a quite a few public meetings uh, with this and Andrew went and I tried to support him the best they can um, it uh, it didn't go through but the the important thing is the the club has gone from strength to strength which is that's the important thing and as you sort of touched on it must be so pleasing to have been part of of the club and to see where it is now oh goodness eventually proud yeah yeah immensely proud. And i think that's that's shown in the ex players association i mean john taylor and alan hutchinson have done such a fantastic job a real example and so many people have a great affinity and want to be involved in it we we have the practical um uh, events the uh, the dinner the um the golf, the uh, bowls, and it's all well supported. Um, and those two guys are, are just fantastic um, in in the ex players. So it's good to, to to see the old face. Had a few sad times this year. Some of the, some of the, the guys have passed away this year, which is all very sad. Um, but it's uh, I think it's fairly unique that the club has got a, uh, an organisation like this, which is people going back 50s, 60s, 70s, incredible. It must be fascinating to share, you know, stories with, say, for example, someone who played in the 57 final at Wembley and, and someone who was in a playoff final in the 90s and, and someone in your, your own era as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and to play golf, play a round of golf with them and, and, uh, and, and just share uh, discussion. And then we got this thing, this bond together that we uh, both, we all wore the light and dark blue. And, uh, and it's great and it's, it's wonderful. All of a sudden you, uh, you back out playing sport like golf and you you feel like you're uh, in a team again and once again that's uh, Alan and Hutch that have uh, enabled this to happen I'd be interested to hear your thoughts as well on, on if it's possible to sort of put your finger on why what you think is so special about the club because there, there seem to be some such fantastic stories that perhaps you wouldn't get at other other clubs yeah I think well when I came it was uh, one of the the last clubs that stepped over from amateur football and, and high principles and I think there was a uh, a great local uh, affinity. I mean, some of the stories going back are, are incredible, and the size of the crowds and what have you. And uh, there was there was great support there. I think it's harder now to do that. There's a, a special feeling in the town. I mean, I, I live over in Ascot, so I don't get to see that many games. But there's a, I think there's a, a great affinity there. Um, hard to maintain that in in this day and age with all finances and big business and owners and, and what have you but uh, I think Wickham maintains that better than most I would say and really nice obviously it, perhaps it was more, more popular years ago but for players to stay at a team for a long time as well which, which you don't get so much nowadays not at all no it's um, yeah that's uh, that's, the, that's the nature of the, of the of the business now but um, yeah I, mean, I think it's their careers it's the, it's the financials um, and uh, they're, they're looking to uh, to well, being managed by agents as well, as the, the game's full of agents and, and telling them to move on uh, for whatever reason or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's unusual, but you, you see, I mean, Matt Bloomfield. I mean, uh, you don't get many of them now, do you? In the staying that much service at the club, and that's a great story. And I think that was what was really nice about the, the team when you were playing as well, because you obviously really established players and, and players that, that that fans would sort of associate themselves with as well. Oh, there was real characters as well. George Borg and Terry Glynn, they 
would show up in their van, George's van, every Thursday or Tuesday and Thursday night, travelling from East London. Real characters. And they go on to be very successful non-league and very, very good footballers as well. Uh, but there was, there was such a dressing room of characters. And I think that's, that's inherent in any good team. Um, you, had, you had to have a good dressing room. We certainly had that. And Howard, Howard was a terrific leader, absolutely terrific, and wonderful footballer as well. And just finally, what's your main kind of, uh, as I say, just a sense of pride, really, uh, that, that, that Wickham are now in the, in the second tier of English football, and obviously results are important, but it's just great that they're there playing such, such big names in the league. Oh, incredible. Still pinch yourself, really. You see the fixtures and the clubs, but uh, I can always say I play for a championship club now, can't I? I suppose they gave me that. So, <laughs> so no, they're, uh, no, it's... It's it, it, it's so exciting for the for the town. That's fantastic. It's been brilliant to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to uh, Ken Wilson. Really, really good uh, to hear his uh, thoughts um, and also echoing again uh, what, what I think we keep saying and also what Gareth says that, well, you know, yes, OK, it's, it's not going that well, but at the same time, look at the teams that we're playing and the names and it is quite exciting. You know, we're going to Carrow Road on Saturday. It's very exciting. You're going to Carrow Road on Saturday. I'm going to Carrow Road on Saturday. We're Have you been I'm before? In the, team. the team's going to Carrow Road. Oh, and I, I must apologise because I did say with regards to the ladies' season that started on Saturday, that was wrong. It starts on Sunday. Sorry, I've got my, my S's wrong uh, there. Um, but great to hear from from uh, Ken um, and uh, we do have more um, previous players and managers I do believe um, yes. coming up for you on the Wickham Wanderer show in the future indeed Keep, watch this space although it's a radio thing so okay. it's a bit tricky to do that any, any, any sort of era that you'd like to tease us with Yes, uh, I should tell you something like that. Uh, we're, we've got a couple of managers actually that we that we're in in discussions with, should we say? Okay. And uh, well, one m- one's more recent, and uh, and one's rather legendary, I should say. Fantastic. Um, and also, we'll be speaking to more more players from different eras as well. Uh, again, thanks to the uh, Ex Players Association. But still to come, we are speaking to uh, the uh, legendary one that is Gareth Ainsworth, <laughs> uh, head of the game against Norwich this coming Saturday. This is Wickham Sound. So five minutes left on the poll if you'd like to get your, your votes in. It's been a mixture of pessimism and optimism on the, on the voting, hasn't it? Uh, from what we understand at the moment, it is level pegging between Norwich and uh, after the tenth game. <laughs> or when after the tenth <laughs> game, nobody's quite sure. Either, either very soon points will come or in, in the more, more distant future points yes. will come. But at some point... Points will come. Points will come. <laughs> we do promise that. No, it's very exciting, isn't it? Like you say, there's a real feeling at the moment, I think, of, you know, obviously losing six games isn't, isn't much fun, but there's still a feeling of, hey, we can win the championship. Definitely. And, and also, well, we are competing. You know, again, I know people might laugh at that, and, and people who haven't seen the games might laugh at that, but if you watch those games, yes, apart from those two that I said earlier on, uh, Blackburn and Swansea weren't quite so, so good, but the other four, we've played really, really well, and particularly, you know, going into the game on Tuesday night, where you did think, well, Reading have done really well. This is, you know, this is going to be a long old evening. And we were great. We played so, so well. Um, and we were just undone by one bit of quality, um, you know, from, from a, a guy who signed for Reading for millions of pounds. So next up is a trip, as we mentioned, to one of last season's Premier League teams. Norwich, let's get Gareth's thoughts ahead of that game. There's one or two key moments where we were doing it last year as well. But in the Championship, you get punished more, you know, you get... A- a £10 million striker against you like Zhao on Tuesday night. Uh, One lapse of concentration and he's in and he takes his chance. You don't get that in League One. We get it in the Championship. So, um, but everyone, everyone has these momentary lapses. You know, Premier League players have it. You know, all goals you could go into in the Premier League and say there was a mistake here, a mistake there. So, we've just got to make sure the key moments um, in both boxes, I think, is what counts. And we're getting to grips with that. Um, But super positive, you know, the performances have definitely been getting there. Um, we are coming up against who I consider to be possibly the best team in the league on Saturday in Norwich. I think they're an outstanding football team with a great manager and uh, so this is going to be a real test. Um, but, you know, we've just we've just taken the team that's sitting currently top of the league all the way and I think if, if we're being honest people will say, how oh, did Wickham not get anything out of that game? You know, and um, and so that really gives me positive uh, attitude going into the next games. You know, I mean, Norwich, Watford, Sheffield Wednesday, <laughs> Birmingham Forest, what a run of games. And, and it's brilliant. It really is brilliant to, uh, to be going into these games. So just keep performing, boys. Keep going the way you are. Um, we'll be just fine. I have, 
I have total belief that this team will stay in this league after what we've just done to Millwall and Reading. Um, I just feel that we uh, will get the look and it'll turn and we'll get the uh, we'll get the points on the board quickly. We're putting in some great displays, but we still haven't got any points. What do you put that down to? It's a lack of goals, obviously. You know, we've um, we we struggle to score. Um, there's no hiding place with that. You know, one in six isn't isn't good enough in the league. Um, we've had shots, but they've been saved. They've been speculative shots. Um, we haven't created as many chances like we did last year, free-flowing, touches in the opposition box, shots on target. Although we outdid Reading on Tuesday by quite some distance um, with shots, um, we, we haven't hit the net, you know, and and, uh, and that's, you know, that's key. So, uh, yeah, I think scoring goals, we're, we're, we're in a tough league, you know, we're, we're looking for clean sheets, maybe a, maybe a tough ask in this league, but um, we have to go and score goals at the other end. I think, Bale not being fully fit, Uchik Pizu not not being fully fit yet um, has has been it's been tough, you know, because I think if you look at the goals from last season, Bale's involved in well quite quite a few goals. Uh, I'd say the majority of the last four years have involved Bale with assists or scoring. Um, Uchi again is coming to to be that Bale type up front, um, and we you know we we really need the players to start. Um, believing they're going to score and, uh, and you know, all the training we do, we hit the netting target and training, it's just different in the games. We, uh, we've got to make sure we, we start getting some goals on the board, which is, is key for us now. A fully fit Bayo could really do some damage in this league, couldn't he? In any league, Bayo, I can find, will cause mayhem, even in the Premier League, believe me. I know what that guy can do. And if you play the right way to him, he, he can, he can really dictate games. And, uh, and I think having him back will be huge for us. Um, Bayo knows he's not fully fit yet. Uh, and, it, you know, I think in recent seasons, his first season he wasn't up to speed. His third season, I think it was, he wasn't up to speed. And we missed him, you know, and, and I think that there's no shine away. You know, if if, uh, if one of your top players is out of the team, um, in any team, Man United, Liverpool, anywhere, I think you, you miss them. And, uh, and we've missed Bayo's presence definitely in the first four games and I think it's no coincidence that the last two games we've been super competitive and Bale has been involved in both dressing rooms you know so really pleased to have him back he's a fantastic fella and uh, and looking forward to seeing what he can do in this championship because he got rolled off in league two uh, and uh, and that's uh, that's a crazy thing to do because he's a uh, He's well worth his weight. Could you do without playing two teams now who were playing Premier League football this time last year? It's a tough run of games, you know. There's no, there's no hiding from it. This is the championship, you know. And uh, the good thing is, um, I think there's some teams that are going to struggle this year um, for points. So I think if we can get some points on the board, we won't be far off, uh, uh, you know, battling for our survival, which I firmly believe we can achieve. So. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be. We're not going to be cut adrift ever. I think it's going to be a going to be a competitive league right through. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what we can do. But um, the games you look at, the, you know, we've got two ex Premier League teams in the next two games. They're both both with huge parachute payments, both with enormous budgets. And uh, and when I used to go on in leagues one and two about the gap in in finances and resource. Wow, you you go to these two clubs and training grounds and and players they have international players. Uh, you know, I think Watford had over twelve, I think it was international players in the international break. You know, we had Daryl called up at the last minute, and the difference is is quite substantial in 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 this league. But we have proved on on Tuesday and on Saturday we can mix it with with some of the best teams in the league, and. Uh, I'm looking forward to mixing it again on Saturday. Finally, the recent history of Norwich City is a little bit like our own. Daniel Falk took them up when nobody expected them to be in with a chance of promotion two seasons ago. What do you make of the job that he's done at that club? What a fantastic manager Daniel Falk is, you know, and a fantastic guy as well. Um, I have big respect for him. Um, he's uh, He came to us in the Carabao or, or League Cup, I can't remember what it was called, a few years ago in a 4-3 game. Um, he'll remember Akin Fenwick because Akin Fenwick came on that day and played really well and uh, and we changed the game back but um, he uh, he does things in the right way he conducts himself in the media and on the touchline in, in a fantastic way and I've got nothing but the utmost respect for somebody who 
comes to the country from another country and gets the team promoted to the Premier League, um, a big club like Norwich. I think he's, I think he's a fantastic guy. It'd be great to battle against him and a privilege to go to Carroll Road. You know, this is what it is. You know, I want to go there and and really make a mark and really get my boys to say, right, we're here. We've we've earned the right to be here. We're in the same league as these, and let's let's have a right go. You know, so. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the whole weekend and then soon after that we get Watford you know we're um, a whisker away from staying in the Premier League so it's two fantastic games coming up which should whet the appetite of all the boys I just want the attitude to be this is what we wanted this is what we came for this is what we've been dreaming of all our lives as footballers not fearing it not thinking oh these are going to be tough these are opportunities to show why we can wonder who's got to the championship and I want to take this opportunity with both hands Fantastic I must say thank you to uh, Matt at the club as well for uh, for helping us out with the, uh, the interview Yeah that was very good of you Matt thank you very much we do appreciate all of your efforts uh, for Wickham Sound um, I can reveal the poll oh, 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 <laughs> Didn't know what was going to happen then. No, no I, I wasn't re- referring back to, uh, to to Mr Cecil or Mr Ainsworth um, <laughs> I can reveal with regards to the poll um, that, that yes people have gone for the positive option oh. and they have said that yes we will be getting our first points of the season at Carrow Road on Saturday That's something to look forward to Indeed absolutely uh, and you know Norwich I mean they're doing okay and Gareth was very very complimentary both about uh, Daniel Falk and about Norwich generally mm. Um but you know, uh, when you look at the table, I'd, I'd I'd rather be playing. If I had the choice at the moment, I'd rather be playing Norwich than Watford. Yes, good point. You know, I know I, I, I know that we've then got to play Watford on Tuesday night. But yeah, I would. And of course, we can be a team traditionally who, who raise their game against the bigger teams and, and really like a challenge and. And it would be excellent to get some points. It would be really, really nice. Uh, so Norwich so far um, uh, are currently eighth. Um, played six, uh, won three, drawn one, lost two. And like Ken said earlier, oh, it may be on no points, but still four points from safety. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, uh, let, let, let's just check. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, so so if we, if we win, but with our goal difference, yes, four points from safety, really. And looking ahead, though, quite a few quite a few tough games to come. They're, they're all tough at this level, yeah. but <laughs> and the, yeah, that's the thing. They're when, coming thick and Gareth, fast. And then Gareth was going then going through them, and you do think, right? Okay, Norwich, Watford, <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday, isn't uh, Bournemouth quite soon? Birmingham as well. City, mm. Nottingham Forest. <laughs> um, but you know, but this is why we're in this league. Absolutely, this is why we're here. So yeah, you know, let, let's not get and too, long may it continue too as well. despondent. Um, and it was great to hear as well how positive he was um, talking today, because as I say, you know, it was quite noticeable on Tuesday night that he was quite disappointed and he was quite down for Gareth but actually I thought that was really good because it actually showed how well we'd played and how close we came to getting a point against Reading. It's very very exciting, I'm excited Yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to Saturday I think, you know, I, whereas again going before the Reading game I went along thinking oh goodness me, this is going to be tough, actually on Saturday I'm going along thinking we're going to compete today we're going we're to give Norwich a decent game they are going to have to play really really well uh, to get something from that match and fingers crossed we will be bringing some points back to Buckinghamshire from Norfolk on M- Saturday. Must be so buoyed as well by the fact that uh, created many chances in many of the games and now we've scored a goal as well. And we've scored a goal as well. That is it from us for tonight. Remember that you can download the podcast from all good podcast providers. <laughs>